So today we are going to run an Aristotle hearth. What is an Aristotle hearth? Well, an Aristotle hearth is obviously a philosophical concept developed by the Greek philosopher Aristotle. So we are here with Andy from How to Make Everything, and we are going to try doing an Aristotle hearth to make steel out of iron. And this is something that's been recommended to you on your channel before. Yeah, my previous attempt at smelting the result was, was iron, but it wasn't consolidated. And this was recommended to me to actually consolidate it into something a little bit more workable. Um, you guys are a little bit more experienced with it, so I'm curious to see how it works. Me too. Um, more experience means we tried it once and it didn't work. <laughs> so we're about to give it a second try. We've got a bucket full of nails right here. We've got a super miniature bloomery here with an air inlet at the bottom. And we're going to make it very hot and try to melt all of these nails together into a single piece of steel. And ideally what we'll get at the end looks like a bloom, but it will be made of steel because as the iron stays in contact with the carbon of the charcoal, it's actually gonna pick up some of that carbon and become more and more steel. So the Aristotle hearth yields basically two net benefits. Net benefit number one, you can conglomerate smaller pieces of iron, which is why it's nice, you know, if you have a fragmented bloom or a low quality bloom, you can run it through an Aristotle hearth and it will hopefully congeal more. And then the second benefit, as you said, is the contact with the carbon means that it can become steel. Let's get going. Let's see what happens. This is the Aristotle hearth in action. It's also an illustration of good and basic heuristic number 637 for lighting and maintaining large fires for your backyard projects. If your fire isn't large enough or isn't hot enough, you'll be tempted to just throw on more fuel. However, often the size and heat of your fire is bottlenecked not by the amount of fuel, but by the amount of airflow. So before you throw on another load of charcoal, try hooking up a fan. In addition to old rusty nails, we'll be feeding the Aristotle hearth with leftovers from our smelt with Andy. These bloom fragments either broke off from the main bloom or else formed separately and never congealed to the main bloom. Putting them in the Aristotle hearth is giving them a second chance at life, a second chance to be useful, a sort of twice-baked bloom, if you will. This is one of several bloom clumps that we pulled out of the Aristotle hearth. You can see how the nails and smaller fragments of bloom have welded themselves together into a single piece. This is exactly what the Aristotle hearth is supposed to do. Consolidate scattered metal fragments into a single chunk. On the left is an ordinary mild steel nail. On the right is a nail that we put through the Aristotle hearth. There's little or no difference between the sparks emitted from these two nails meaning that they likely have the same amount of carbon in them. So, unfortunately, little or no carburization took place. Most likely, this is for one of two reasons. Either we didn't run the furnace long enough, or we didn't have a high enough ratio of charcoal to iron. Also, if you're curious about how to turn a bloom into a bar of forgeable iron, very soon we're going to be posting an in-depth video about that process using a primitive forge setup. So subscribe and stay tuned for that. How about that Aristotle furnace? Yeah, so we had some uh, interesting and mixed results and you can tell, you know, we are, we're lighting ourselves by cell phones because uh, we went a little later than we intended. So we actually considered doing this whole thing as a ghost story. So the Aristotle hearth, so why do you do an Aristotle hearth? Well, there's two fundamental reasons. One is to increase the carbon content of the metal, right? To, to carburize the metal, to turn it into steel. And then the second reason is to 
um, consolidate pieces together. The most successful thing we saw was pieces centering together. Yes, and some of the bloom material from the smelt that we did today got put into the Aristotle furnace, and that seems to have coalesced into enough of a bloom that we might be able to actually forge it. So that's the difference between being able to use it and not being able to use it. And then of course we also had nails and bolts that started centering together into this, you know, rather fascinating sculpture that we'll have to name and put on the wall someday. Unfortunately, we started running low on charcoal, so we probably did not run the Aristotle hearth as long as it would like. So this is a project we may need to return to in the future. We've had a great time filming with Andy from How to Make Everything. If you haven't checked out his videos, you absolutely should. Today we did two projects. We filmed one of them for this channel. The project on this channel was finishing the Aristotle hearth, but on the other one, you can see the most successful smelt we have ever done. So if you want to see that and see us forging some of the bloom, I encourage you to check it out. His stuff is incredible. Again, a huge thank you to Andy from How to Make Everything for coming on the channel and uh, having us on yours. Thank you yep. for being here. Thank and uh, we'll see you next time. Or will we? Why don't we film this way all the time? <laughs> <laughs>